Today's video is going to be a bit of a departure from the norm of the type of content I make, but I want to do a video just outlining the 5090 laptop in terms of how it performs for local AI tasks. Now, in terms of the specific system that we are using here for the testing, this is an MSI Raider 18HX AI A2XWJG. Um, whatever that means to you. <laughs> so it has two terabytes of storage. It has obviously the 24 gigabyte dedicated 5090. It has 64 gigabytes of system RAM at a speed of 5600 megahertz. Now I do believe the micro center site, which is where I purchased this uh, at a local micro center. I do believe they're listing that at like 6400 or 6800. So that is mistaken in the listing there. And then the processor is the Intel Core Ultra 9 285HX at well, the speed here is not as important as what the processor is because it can boost and things like that. So those are the specific specifications of the laptop that is going to be used today for the testing. Now, when I was looking into getting one of these laptops, I really did not find any information online, not only in terms of how they would perform with token speed and things that pertain to kind of LLM performance, but whether or not it would actually work and play nicely with newer versions of Ubuntu. So as we can see on the screen right here, I am very happy to report that not only does the GPU actually work in Ubuntu, as well as the laptop in general, but it is capable of handling a 32 billion parameter model, which we can see right here is GLM 432B, which is very well touted for its web development and UX UI design skills. It is currently using around 13,189 tokens for the context length. Everything here is entirely offloaded to the GPU. And as we can see in NVIDIA SMI, it is using around 21 gigabytes of video RAM. So maybe shave off 500 megs to a gig for just system overhead in general, but this is something that other than some very odd fringe like $10,000 laptop from a couple of years ago was not possible in a laptop up until the 5090. So a 24 gig card in a laptop is very cool and really was something that I had been waiting for for a while. So I jumped on it and I just wanna make a video talking about some of the things that are positives as well as some of the negatives that I've noticed. Now we can see upon the conclusion of this rather large website that GLM4 just generated, the total speed here was 19.13 tokens per second. And again, this is a Q4KM quantization of a 32 billion parameter model with a 13,189 context length set in it, entirely offloaded onto the video card. Now in keeping with some of my videos consistency, I suppose we'll take a quick peek at the website, but really what we're gonna do after this is hop over to Windows where this GPU will actually be able to use all of the 150 plus watts that are allocated to it and we will run this same test again just to get some proper performance metrics. And for continuity here is the website that was just generated through GLM4 32B on the local machine. So obviously if you are familiar with kind of the local LLM sphere this model is very highly well regarded for its design capabilities specifically excelling in web design tasks such as this. I mean to do this in one shot on a laptop is really quite cool. I mean if you want to go into the middle of the woods or something like that and um, probably get like half an hour of battery life, but you could pop this out without internet access or anything like that. <laughs> Aside from that, let's now just go ahead and hop over to Windows where we will be able to do some more, I suppose, accurate testing in the performance metrics here. Now that we are all set and booted into Windows, if I just open PowerShell and run NVIDIA-SMI with the flags-L and then 5 for just updating every 5 seconds, we will see here that in NVIDIA-SMI, the card is reporting a max power capacity of 150 watts. Um, the 175 is for something called dynamic boost, which I suppose is outside the scope of this video. So for the purpose of this, let's just say that this card has a max of 150 watts for the way we are going to be using it right now. So this will basically go ahead and just update every five seconds. And truthfully, I'm just going to kind of drag it out of the way over there. And I will go ahead and just open up LM Studio as we did on Ubuntu. I do have GLM 432B downloaded and we can see right here that I was testing um, a different model with some math things, which was just a default suggestion from LM Studio. I have no um, interest or capability to actually be assessing those mathematical responses. And we will just set the context length to, I believe it was 13,189. Um, it will be relatively similar to what it was in Ubuntu, even if it's not exactly the same. And as we allow this to load in, I'll just kind of go here and take a peek. So keep in mind that this will be updating every five seconds. I did have it updating every one second in Linux, but um, 
it's kind of choppy the way it updates in PowerShell, so I uh, slowed that down a bit. And we can now see that the VRAM utilization is around 21 gigabytes of video RAM. And again, just assume that there's a bit of overhead there added on from just running the actual OS or desktop environment, whatever you would like to call that. Now I will just go ahead and kind of put this over here because I do want to actually be able to keep an eye on the power figures here as well since this is a more realistic benchmark for the actual speed of this card. And we can already see first and foremost that this is going a bit faster than it was in Linux and that is kind of reinforced by the fact right here that we can see the card is using over 140 watts as opposed to the cap of 95 that it was on Linux. So this will just give us a better token speed result at least. However, I did want to just show the Linux result as well because if you are someone looking to actually purchase one of these laptops, that may be an issue that you encounter for a while. So it could be prudent to actually just have an idea of how that would impact impact speed. Now in terms of temps here, we can see that the card is going to get hotter than it did in Ubuntu, and that is just due to the fact that it is getting more power draw going through it. This laptop, this is an MSI Raider 18, I don't know, it's yeah, a Raider, I think. <laughs> but basically it has some little key shortcut where if you hit it, it will ramp up the fans fully and they do become rather loud. So I am actually going to show that because it drops the thermals fairly significantly at the expense of like a very obnoxiously loud fan sound. So I'll kind of just let the card creep up because I am interested in seeing like how hot this will get throughout some prolonged text generation. So the card has been around 68 Celsius now for at least a minute or so. So I am just going to go ahead and hit that like fan boost key, if you will. I don't know if these will really come through on the microphone, but we will basically just see that temperature start to drop. And again, this is every five seconds that the temperature will be updated. Now we can see that with the fans on full blast, the temperature ends up dropping about 10 Celsius, which is a fairly significant decrease. Even without the fans, I don't believe 68 Celsius is very hot, at least for sustained load like this. Again, I'm not using this laptop to game or anything. Aside from the very rare Beam NG game kind of I don't use this to game at all. I'm just not really a huge gamer, but I'm not sure how the temps would fare under some like heavy duty gaming. But for this, we can see that it's been drawing over 140 watts for the entire duration of this generation. And with the fans on full blast, it's now down to 56 Celsius. I would say the ambient air temperature in the room I'm in right now, as I suppose that would have some uh, effect on this test, is likely around 65 degrees Fahrenheit, so. And as this finishes up by just kind of summing up the actual website it's designed, we will soon see the token speed here. So we can see right now that this was around 24.9 tokens per second. I suppose it would be reasonable to call that 25 tokens per second. And while my short-term memory may be letting me down here, I do believe in Ubuntu it was somewhere around 19. So there is a... I mean, percentage-wise, that's a fairly significant increase in token speed, and that just kind of correlates with the increased power consumption that the card is able to um, consume under <laughs> Windows, I suppose one could say. Now, I did actually do a test with this just with flash attention enabled as well, and I am going to just go ahead and do that here as well, and we'll basically be able to just see what, if any, differences there are with the actual generation speed. So I will go ahead and apply that, which will then prompt us to actually reload the model to apply the changes. And I will just run through the same test again. However, I will fast forward to the end so we can just see the token generation speed. So for the test right here, where we just ran this again, but with flash attention enabled, first and foremost, I did see the GPU temp get up to around 72 or 73 Celsius, and this was also maxed out in terms of wattage there. It did do this at a total speed of 26.17 tokens per second, and if we go back here into our chat history, we will see the previous one was 24.9. So there can be slight nuances and differences to cause like different speeds and things like that, but it does seem, at least in this specific case, that using flash attention and sped this up a little bit. While this sort of testing that we're about to take a peek at would not necessitate a graphics card like this, I have just loaded in Quen 3 8B at a Q8 quantization with the context length set to a maximum of 32,768. It is entirely offloaded onto the GPU and this is reading that it's using around 13 0.3 gigabytes of video RAM. With that, I will just kind of type something very simple to it like, hey, how are you? Tell me a very long story. And it will begin to think here, and obviously it didn't think very long, but 
the token speed here is relatively quick. The card is drawing a decent amount of power there at around 140 watts, I'd call it. It is just making up some random story here that, truthfully, I'm not really going to read, as my only interest here is in the actual token speed of this generation. And the speed for the Quen 3 8B model at a Q8 quantization was 67.7 tokens per second. Again, I'm not entirely sure how these figures would stack up against other hardware. I truthfully just want to provide a video that gives some of these in testing this card, as I really wasn't able to find anything like this online when I was interested in buying this, so... Now as a final test here just for token speed, I am going to use Olama through PowerShell just to do a test of Quen 3 32B. Using the verbose flag right here will actually show us the overall speed of the generated response. And that Quen model that is generating right here in this tab, of course, is a Q4KM of Quen 332B, which is currently taking up around 21 gigabytes of video RAM and near the maximum power capability of this card. And we can see right here that was a total speed of 25.63 tokens per second. Something that I've noticed that is a bit frustrating to me is you can see right here that the maximum power limit for this GPU is listed in NVIDIA SMI as 95 watts. Now this GPU is technically supposed to support up to 175 through something called dynamic boost, but even disregarding that, it should show a top end limit here of 150 watts. Unfortunately, all of the tricks you could probably think to suggest right now have been tried and do not work in actually getting this limit to be upped. Um, they did deprecate the power limit setting with an older driver version than what I have right here, a 570.144. And even checking to see if Dynamic Boost is able to be enabled with this laptop, which Ubuntu shows that it can be. And it even actually shows this GPU as having a maximum theoretical power limit of 175 watts. I still have not been able to kind of deal with this issue. So this is frustrating because obviously this will significantly slow down the possible token generation speed of any one model that you may be running. It is something that will ultimately get resolved in newer driver versions or with some additional perhaps more hardcore tweaking. I do want to specifically just mention that though as it is really probably the biggest thing that frustrates me about this. Now a question that commonly comes up when folks talk about buying like high-end AI systems is why not just get a Mac? And the Macs are fantastic for if you're running an LLM and want to have like quote-unquote unlimited context length, you can get an M4 whatever the Macs Pro whatever MacBook Pro with 128 gigabytes of system RAM and you will have a laptop that will basically gobble up as much context length as you could throw at it. However, beyond that, and depending on your specific use case, you're either going to know like, oh, I can just go get a Mac and use this, or you're going to know, unfortunately, I'm not able to choose an Apple for this. I need to use Linux. I need to be able to use some software that's not available on the Apple. Or if you're like me, you might just be frustrated because they don't have number pads. And if that is a deal breaker for you, then um, welcome to the club. I will say I'm not an Apple hater. I use Mac every single day for kind of like my main stuff. If I disliked Apple, I would not one, have a Macintosh portable on the shelf behind me, or the poster behind me that's like the rainbow poster is actually every single Apple product made up until 2012, which is when I bought the poster. So that's why it cuts off there. But I love Apple. I love Mac just for, I suppose, specific types of work. I find that I prefer to use a Linux system. With that, that is probably going to wrap this up. I just kind of wanted to do a kind of simple just speed benchmark for running LLMs on a 5090 laptop as I didn't see this really covered anywhere. Obviously, there are other considerations here like, okay, well, what is the actual throughput of this card and things like that? And honestly, that's just kind of outside the scope of this video. But if you do have specific things you would like to know about this card performance wise, please feel free to leave them in the comments because I may just put a post up on my website or something like that with a bit more more organized and thorough information on actual benchmarks of this card. With that, that's going to wrap it up. Um, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments.